You're listening to Biblically Speaking, the show where we let the Bible do all the talking. Hi everyone, welcome to another show. We're glad you can join us once again. And today we're discussing what has God said concerning your life, in particular, your relationship. Now, before we begin, let me introduce myself. I'm Belgi. And I'm Aura Alador. And welcome once again. Let's go straight into the topic of today. Now we're discussing what has God said. With regards to relationship, one thing we like to encourage couples is that it's useful when you're doing something to understand that everything has a purpose. As Christians, we don't do things for the sake of fun. As a child of God, we understand we are now brought back into his kingdom. We now belong to him. He is now our Lord and our Savior and we are his prized possession. So we cannot just do what the world does, which is go about our life as our own. Our life is no longer our own. It now belongs to the Lord. So when you're about to do something, we like to ask, what did God tell you? Have you sought the Lord? Have you prayed about what you're about to do or what you're doing? So what has God said concerning your relationship? Has God told you to enter a relationship? Has God told you that this person in your life is the person that he has brought in your life for you to pursue a relationship. Those are the challenging questions that we like couples to consider or singles to consider because at the end of the day, it's about destiny. We are a people who have destinies ahead of us. And we also understand that our ultimate destination is heaven. And we should be careful that in pursuing relationship that we don't um, make the mistake of doing things outside of God's will enough that we derail ourselves from the path he has set for us. So let's talk about what has God said and we'll try as much as we can to relate it to what he told us when we were pursuing um, courting with one another. Um, What does hearing from God mean? I think it's um, the way that that God speaks to people, God speaks to people differently. Some people God speaks audibly to, some through you know, like a no, you know, a, a, a conviction in your their spirit. Mm. So it's a knowing that, uh, you know, a very strong conviction of knowing. Mm. Um, and some people, it's you know through the word that the word literally jumps out at them when they're reading a specific scripture and they know that this is the word that God has for them. Mm. And so I think it um, when we ask the question, when we're asking the question, what has God said? Mm. It's about okay, have have number one, have we sought God or have I sought God regarding? wanting to enter a relationship with somebody yeah. or um, I'm in a relationship and what has God said regarding this relationship? Am I going about it, you know, because I want to be in a relationship mm. or I've started a friendship and I've found myself that it's moved a lot further than, you know, it had originally planned because sometimes those things happen mm. and it's about just taking a step back and going back to God and saying, actually, God, what is the purpose for this relationship? Is this the person that you've brought into my life for me to marry? Mm what do they mean to me is it that i'm meant to maintain only friendship with them Mm. um or is it meant to be that i'm maintaining only friendship for this period of time or is it that we're entering a courtship um which is that you know that i know that this is who you've called me for and we're pursuing marriage together Mm. Mm. um and i think the the problem is is that most of us find ourselves you know we pray to god about the right careers and what career should we do? What education should we go? Mm. What job should we apply for? You know, sometimes, you know, which direction should we take in our in our lives? Mm. But we leave God out of this area, which is so important in terms of destiny, in terms of purpose, because it can derail us. It can mm. throw us far and wide from where God originally intended us to be. Mm. Um, so it's about really sitting down and, you know, thinking about these things seriously, praying about these things seriously. Um, so I'm not saying that everybody's going to hear an audible voice from God, but whichever way you hear from God, seek him and ask him because he delights in those. He delights in answering our prayers. He delights in communion and speaking to us. Mm. We don't serve a God who doesn't answer. Our God isn't deaf. Um, our God isn't blind. He, he He's not a God that if we ask him in faith that he's going to ignore us, like, mm. you know. So seek God and speak to him regarding these things because other, because it also gives you something to stand on later on because relationships don't always go smoothly. There, there are ups and there are downs, there are bumps, there are situations that you have to work through. But 
when God has spoken a word to you, it gives you something to stand on. It gives you something to hold on to in all of the trials and tribulations that may come, mm-hmm. not just in the relationship, but in life itself. So it allows you to hold on to something because what, God's, what God speaks, what God has said, always comes to pass. When you're speaking that, what comes to mind is um, John the Baptist. Now, we understand, you know, when you read the Bible that at one stage when he was baptizing Jesus, we hear that there was a big, massive, audible voice from heaven. God speaking directly to concerning Jesus saying, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. Now we read further along the chapters and then John was now in prison and he was, he was sending a word to say, are you, you know, concerning Jesus saying, are you the one or should we look for another? Now we see that even when we have an audible voice from God, sometimes life brings about challenges or we get to a point where sometimes we may forget or we can have a doubt what God has said. And Jesus said something very vital to John. He said, tell John the blind sees, the deaf are now hearing, you know, all the signs are there. What more do you want? So sometimes what we say is hearing God's voice is very important because even in the midst of that, faith must still be applied we still need faith even when we hear god regardless how we hear him whether it's through the word like we just explained or audible voice we still need consistently seeking his presence to just keep reaffirming ourselves and to keep in the faith again um what we also say is that the bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses the matter is established so god is not just going to speak once he will confirm it he will either use again use his word or use other people it is just to stir us up and to keep our faith strong because like we just said relationship has its ups and down at that time when you know at the beginning everything is all rosy and everything is all loving but when you then see another side of your partner which you were not aware of that can create doubt and it is the word that god has given to you that will keep you firm to know that yes he may not be acting how he ought to act but i know this is my wife or this is my husband and this relationship has been put together by god so that's why we encourage everyone to say what has god said because with god on your side you know you have someone that's cheering you guys along you have someone that's enabling you guys you have someone that's coming alongside you to ensure that this relationship reaches its ultimate destination which is marriage and I think um, it, one of the, the reasons why it's important to hear from God regarding, you know, such an important um, step is that two things happen when you don't hear from God. You mm. get into a relationship and it goes along and then eventually it may fall apart or break apart and then you're left hurt, um, you know, and or, you know, another situation is that you may get into the relationship and you know, it's going along and it's going ahead and it's progressing, but then you have doubt about, you know, is this or isn't it? Like the, the one thing that we see is a lot of Christians are in relationships and they've been in these relationships for a couple of years. And then when you ask them, you know, mm. is this your wife? Mm. Are you, are you, is this the person you're planning to marry? They're unsure about it. Mm. They don't know. So it's we're asking, so why are you in a relationship you're unsure about whether God wants you to be in it mm. but the problem is at this point in time is because there's an emotional investment already made it's then very difficult to separate yourself from it to be able to hear clearly from God mm. at that point in time mm. it's easy it's much easier to hear from God when you haven't made that investment yeah because when you now make the investment it's now you're battling with your feelings, your emotions, and sometimes it takes an act of God for you to come out of this relationship sure. because it's not what he wants for you. Mm. Um, I think we were talking before um, when we were having a conversation about what happens when you get into a relationship and it, and it breaks apart. Mm. It causes you to not only have a lack of trust in um, whoever it is that you're dating, whether it be males or females, but it also causes you to lose faith in God. Mm. Because if you haven't heard clearly, if you haven't heard clearly from God and you've gone into a relationship supposing, thinking you're not sure, but you think he might be for it, but you're not completely sure whether it's from God and then it breaks down, it causes you to doubt God. Mm. Everything that we do as Christians is about faith. Mm. And faith is something that is that can be fragile when we invest it in the wrong areas. When it's invested in God, properly invested in God, 
it may be tried, mm. but it will be strengthened. Yeah, but when we invest it in the wrong things, such as a wrong relationship, unfortunately, what happens is most people turn around and blame God, like, mm. oh God, how? And then what happens is there's a lack of faith in the belief that God can now bring the right person. And the more this continues to happen, the more you begin to doubt that there is the person that God's called you for, um, the idea of getting married, the idea of, you know, being in a, a godly relationship. And we've seen it happen and we've, you know, watched the aftermath of it happen. Mm. So people, and it doesn't just affect your faith in relationships, it affects your faith in God in every area, in every aspect, mm. where you were once having a childlike faith and believing God for everything mm. and trusting God for everything. Because of this area where you didn't trust God and you jumped into it, it begins to have a knock-on effect on the ev other areas of your Christian walk. And this is why we say, if you have not heard from God and, you know, then don't go ahead of yourself. Don't enter a relationship if you have not heard from God. And it's a challenge. Christians, we are begging you. It is the most challenging period it's the most challenging thing we can do like we said we do it concerning our jobs and our careers let's also apply it concerning this most important aspects of our life hear from god be like jacob if you have to wrestle all night until god blesses you do so if it takes a whole year before god speaks to you wait upon the lord and god is faithful he he speaks my beloved he speaks he is not a god who um who, 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 when you're bringing this heartfelt desire to him, he'll be like, no, 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 nah, I'm not interested. He wants you to bring these desires to him because at the end of the day, he's the one that created you. He created you with these desires, so he knows they are there. So bring it to him. And we say, look, the best place to be is exactly there where you're interested in someone, you find someone attractive and you sense that, you know what? I want to pursue a relationship with this person. That's the best place to then go to God and say, God, this is how I feel. This is what I have seen and I like and I want. What says you, God? And wait until God gives you an answer. It's challenging sometimes. And that brings us to the very first thing, that the basic foundation of our Christian walk is hearing from God. Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice. So if we don't know what the shepherd's voice sounds like, if we don't know how we communicate with God, we need to perhaps, that's the first training we need, is learning to hear from God through scriptures and just fine tune your hearing. And then when you come to um, asking God concerning these life matters, you know what, it should be easier. We're not saying it's just gonna be as plain simple, but it should be easier. You brought up um, just a small thing to touch upon was that um, you, you said that you're gonna talk about our experience about ask, speaking to God. And I think I touched a little bit about it in the last episode where I spoke about how God brought, but it'll be nice to maybe hear from you how cause your, your story is a little bit different. You see, with me, I think when I came back into the Lord, I, it just made sense for me to do things God's way. I did it my way. I mean, one of the first area that I was a bit concerned about was I went to university and I studied a degree that I had no consultation with regards to going back to God or asking God concerning what I was made to study. So that kind of hit me that I went about doing life my own way. Did God actually want me to study such a course? And I took it took me years to actually just pray to God and say, God, did I do a wrong course? Was I meant to do this course in the first place? And I got to a point where God actually literally just put a piece in my mind is that, look, all things will work for the good. Yes, you went about doing it your way, but I was aware of it. <laughs> Nothing caught me by surprise. And then to see later on how he began to use the same skills that I acquired from that course to then be applying in other areas, it was just amazing. You see, nothing catches God by surprise. And yes, he wants us to walk on the perfect path that he set for us, but some of us go astray. And, you know, and, and, and as I always say, he brings us into his rescue plan, which means he then has to do the groundworks. So he began to teach me there that actually, He's in control now. And so long as I give my life to him and so long as I dedicate my next future to him and every decision I make, he will direct me. And one of the areas that I had to make sure I was clear about was when I entered the relationship with you. At the friendship stage, I was like, God, I don't want to enter another relationship that will just end up in failure. In fact, I read in Corinthians where it says love never fails. So there were scriptures that were just jumping to me. It's like, love never fails and i was like if love never fails then if 
a relationship fails, then that was not love. Because God's love is pure, it's enduring. So again, I was like, God, I want the love that never fails. Again, God, I want to know this person in my life, are they going to be the person that's going to draw me closer to you or are they going to bring me away from you? So it's to see that you were passionate for the Lord, to see that you were drawing me closer and closer to God. Again, it was me asking God, I, I see this woman, the necessity of having this woman in my life. Is she my wife or not? Because I had to be very clear. There's no point trying to pursue long-term relationship with you when it was going nowhere. I will invest my time, my energy, money and emotions and yet have nothing to you know, show for it. Again, I was also aware as if when I read in the scripture where about sowing into the right ground, I thought, you know what? I don't want to sow into a field or ground that someone else is going to rip out of it. I wanted to make sure wherever I pour into your life, I'm going to be the one benefiting from it. Again, so it was for me to wrestle with the Lord and say, God, show me, is this my wife? It took time. It took time for me to get there. But when the Lord began to speak and when the Lord showed me clearly that this is was my wife, it just gave me the reassurance that actually this is not a waste of time. Again, so it was very important for me that, you know, every stage of our relationship, I was hearing clearly from God to know that at the beginning, he said, let's be friends. And when my emotions grow stronger and stronger, I had to report myself to God. I said, God, I actually, I have more feelings towards you. It's like, I, 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 I want her to be my wife. What says you? And then God just began to reveal and reveal and reveal. And it came to a point where he actually spoke very clearly something that I spoke to him and he brought it to mind and he spoke through you to confirm exactly what I have asked of him. So that's what we're challenging everyone to say, because now my, my brothers and sisters, if anyone comes to me and says, are you sure you're married to your wife? hundred percent. I have no hesitation. You can challenge me left, right, center to say, oh, maybe the one is somewhere else in the, in some far land. I will tell you that one is for someone else because I have who God has put in my life. I have found my wife. I don't need to be concerned about anyone else. This is my wife and I see clearly why God brought into my life. So I have no need to question. And that's where we're getting people to uh, understand. In asking what has God said, it's actually to get you to be more reassured in your relationship. To be 100% sure that who you're courting is actually your husband or your wife. And to not doubt when the Lord speaks, however he chooses to do so. So then in going forward... When the trials, you see, because the devil comes. I mean, in Genesis, he came to Eve. He said, did God say? Now, if you know what God has said, you say, yes, God has said that. And he did that to Jesus. Did God say? Same formula. Did God say blah, 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 blah. So that's what we're trying to do for you to say. When the enemy comes and tries to tempt you, you will stand. And it's also, it's important because it's not just that we're saying this regarding courtship. We're also saying this regarding marriage because what happens is, like Belgi said, he talks about the enemy will come and try to distract and try to, you know, tell you, oh, you know, maybe you married wrong. Mm. Maybe it's the wrong person. Mm. Maybe it's this. As opposed, and so it's just that actually, no, we're married. This is who, who I've chosen. This is who God is well, God has brought into my life. I am pleased with this person. God has said. So it's just... It's as a reassurance, it's for something to stand for you to stand on when tribulations come, when issues come, when the when the enemy comes with lies saying, Is this the one? It gives you something to hold on to. It's a word from God. And when you have a word from God, it just is it's something solid, it's something firm, it's something that you're sure in. It's not that you're sure in yourself or that you're necessarily sure in the relationship, but mm, you're sure in, in God. God. Because people have difficulties and struggles. And so in, in marriage, you learn to love them through it. Mm. And sometimes because of a particular problem or struggle, they may not live as how they're meant to live. Mm. So, you know, it may cause us to doubt because they may not be living as Christ-like as they were mm. before they got married. Mm. It may cause us to doubt, but mm. when you have a word from God, it just gives you something extra to hold on to and to pray. Like, you know, it encourages you to pray for your husband or mm. pray for your wife and to just stand firm on the fact that, you know, we, you know, this is the person that God has made for me. So we're just encouraging you um, as before you get before you enter a relationship, in your, if you're in courtship, to just 
seek God. Seek God because it gives you something solid, firm, sure to hold on to. God's word does not return to him void. Amen. And you know one thing? If you're working for what is yours, you work at it and you give your 100% in it. So when you know this is yours, you're joyfully working at it, knowing that at the end, you're going to eat from his food. Amen. So we hope that blesses you. We hope it was as simple for you to understand. And if any questions, please do get in touch and we'll be glad to um, speak to you more. So until next time, we hope to see you soon. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.